Hey, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission here is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. And today, we're going to have a really great conversation with a lawyer. Now, if you've ever thought that would happen, yeah, surprise, Candace Shepard is an attorney, but she is building a business and developing it and scaling it actually while we're talking, like not physically while we're talking, but she's in the midst of the scaling process right now. And she's very focused on understanding where she wants to get to and all the steps that happen to get to that that end result. It's very motivational, very inspiring, and we're going to learn a lot from her understanding the value of building processes and understanding the ultimate end goal that you're trying to achieve. We'll be chatting about all of that in just a moment. So grab a cup of coffee and join us for the conversation. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. All right, so Candice, let's get started here. One of the segments is rapid fire. Random, gotcha. Five randomly selected questions with unknown point values. Okay, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. I'm you, so ready. Are you ready. comfortable with that? I'll, I'll, it'll do. <laughs> I'll, I'll adapt. <laughs> I'll it's, allow it's, it. No big deal. All right, number one, if you could eliminate one thing from your daily routine, what would it be and why? Oh, gosh. I, I would love to eliminate sleep, probably because I love it too much. I would, if I could not sleep, I could accomplish so much. Yeah. <laughs> that or anything accounting related. Mm, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's probably a big... I mean, sleep is kind of a necessary I, it's, thing. Yeah, never going to happen. But if we're wishing, then I'll eliminate sleep. If something I can actually do, I'll, I'll farm that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that there's probably a lot of people that would say the same <laughs> thing. Uh, number two, when was the last time you tried something new? Oh, every day. Yeah. This morning, right now. Right now. Right now. This first is time new. you've ever recorded a podcast. It is the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I try to do something semi new at least every every week. It, you gotta keep moving forward or you're gonna stop. Yeah. Very so. true. Number three, when you are eighty years old, what will matter to you the most? <laughs> oh, um I was gonna say being alive, but that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, no it's kind um, of a base there. Uh, health, family relationships, uh, faith family, all those, um, all those things that are at th- important at their core that are yep. never going to change. Yeah. Family is a, is a big thing. Absolutely. Cool. The most important thing. There you go. All right. Number four, if you could ask one person alive or dead, only one question, what would you ask and who would you ask? Um, so probably I would ask Jesus what the purpose of mosquitoes are. Uh. Yeah, we have quite a few of those in my house. Mommy, why is this this way? And I'm like, I don't know. We'll ask Jesus someday. Hmm. But m- maybe the mosquito thing would be first. That is a very <laughs> intriguing question. I I would have never expected that one. Uh, why uh, do mosquitoes yeah. exist? Yeah, I don't know. We'll ask Jesus when we get there. There's there's <laughs> there's got to be a purpose, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. All right. Last question, number five. How do you spend the majority of your free time? Uh, well. What's free time? I, 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 I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, the majority of my free time, I, I work a lot, and every second that I'm not working, I try to be very intentional about spending time with my husband and my children, um, doing things that inspire me, reading books, um, church activities, family, friends. Um, I, I try really hard not to waste time on things that, that don't matter in the long run. Mm. Um, I, I do love to read. I, uh, my kiddos are growing older by the second so i try to focus on them Mm. yeah that sounds very inspiring i spend all my free time watching sports right on so yeah Yeah, i'll watch sports if my husband wants to yeah Yeah, i mean we had football on all day yesterday (laughs) so there's that all your free time you're doing things for other people i'm like i'm just gonna sit and watch i'm gonna watch tv yeah (sighs) watch sports yeah i feel really bad about myself now i'm sorry (laughs) <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, 814 is your final score, so congratulations. Is that good? Is that What was the total number available? You don't know? Mm. I don't know. I'll take 814. I mean, it's, it sounds like a good number. It's, <laughs> it's 
completely made up. We have no idea uh, what the scoring metrics are. But anyways, um, thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate being here. Thank you. So uh, just kind of a way of introduction, um, you have been or suggested as a guest from uh, one of our team members who has also been a, uh, a guest on the podcast, yep. Thomas Heavey, yep. or some folks know him as Tommy, which yep. he really enjoys that. <laughs> uh, so uh, he, we, were, we were actually having uh, one of our one-on-ones uh, on a a Wednesday, we were walking around the business park as we frequently do, and he mentioned you. He said, "Hey, this would be a, a great person to have on the podcast." So I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to get into some of that today, but while as we get into that, give us a little bit of a behind the scenes. I guess let's start with this. How do you know Thomas Heavey? So I have been going to church with Thomas and his wife and his children and his in laws for since two thousand and six. How many years is that? Nine thirteen. Math and public. Yep. See, no accounting. Yep, yep. Um, since 2006. 13, that sounds good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's how I know them. All right, we have our, our two oldest, my oldest and his oldest, are the, the same age. So, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, and, then, and then on a day-to-day basis, you're, you run a law firm. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about that and how you got started with that. So, well, I got started uh, uh, with that because I'm a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a, a base level there. <laughs> right, yeah. So Shepherd Law, we do um, we do two things, and we try to do them very well. We do real estate, um, residential, and getting ready to start in commercial, and we do estate planning. And our tagline is uh, helping you with what matters most, home and family. Okay. Um, we're really passionate about helping people with the things that matter in their overall lives, and that's um, – uh, buying a house for their family to live in or for income for their family, those kind of things are really important. Uh, the estate planning piece, when you're gone, you can't fix it. Yeah. So you want to make sure it's right for your family. <clears throat> and all of those things, we are using all of those things as income to le- leapfrog into some things that are really important to us, which is, is adoption. So we're doing that this year as well. So I think that's that's kind of one of the really important things I want to talk about. So when we, we were we were chatting a little bit before we got started here, and one of the things you said was, as I got started in this endeavor, I never really anticipated growing to this point. Right. So you tell us, like, I, I think that is very typical in any industry. Sure. Like, you take the lawyer side out of it, but in any industry, when somebody's doing something um, they, they love or enjoy doing, then you – you get obviously good at it and and you were mentioning earlier hey i was the practitioner and and i and really enjoyed that yeah and the intent was never to really scale or grow but that's kind of where things are going so what how, why did that change and what do you what do you see the reason for it so we I, we being me I, me and the mouse in my pocket uh, I've been practicing for 20 years, and, and like I said, I never intended to be a big firm. And I'm not big by any means now, but th- in 2005, I made a decision to go out on my own and build a practice and do some things that could generate some income for my family and for the things that matter to me, such as um, you know helping adoption and adoption families and and um, you know young women in their path in life, those kind of things. And when I opened up the current space that I'm in, I said a little prayer and I said, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do and walked through the door and it just has exploded from there. Um, We've been very intentional about our growth, making sure that the service we provide is is spot on, um, that we're focusing more on what we're trying to do for the people we serve than on our own bottom line. And that has made the bottom line work out well. Yeah. Um, as that has happened, we we either have to we, have, we either have to grow or stagnate, and we we chose to grow. Yeah. Um, so we're we're adding um, more humans that that can keep the customer service level high, that can keep the work product good, and uh, morph into some things that we're passionate about yeah. that maybe are not what we started out to accomplish. So, kind of walk me through that thought process. So you're you're sitting in your office, and it's it's you and a couple of other folks. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, what you had this moment of realization that says, "Oh, we got to start figuring this thing out yeah. and growing it, or else it's going to kill us." Mm-hmm. Type mentality is that is that kind of where you were? No. You said you say <laughs> stagnate or grow. So it started out with just me. Yeah. And um, I was. I was providing great service to a point, and then it got to a place where I needed to bring on some help because it couldn't be just me anymore, Mm -hmm. Uh, and I brought on one person, and the two of us got our processes down down pat, made the 
uh, service better, okay. the uh, operations better, etc. We were being removed from our current office because of uh, they were going to tear down the building mm-hmm. and make way for the light rail and, and whatnot. And so I, I just really put some thought into it, talked to my husband and said, you know, if I go into this office and do this thing that we're talking about doing, it's going to get big and it's going to get big without me having any control over it. Yeah. I, I know it is. Sure. So uh, we put a lot of thought into it, months, and eventually decided, well, we're, we've been called to do this. We're going to do it the way we feel that it's supposed to happen. And however it turns out, it's going to turn out. So we moved into the office that we're in now and kept adding humans. And the, the, it's been very organic, mm-hmm. the growth. Um, the, the, the people kept coming back because we cared about them. We cared about the people they cared about. Sure. And we did good work. So it has just grown exponentially from there. So. And, and during that process, when you, you and we were talking about it, you decided, hey, I need to shift over from being that day day to day practitioner yep. and working as as a lot of people in the uh, in the in the theory of, of business growth shift from working in the business to on the business. On the business, right? yep. Uh, so, thinking through that, and you're in the middle of this process, like currently, as Correct. we sit today, this is a, a transition that Correct. you're that you're dealing with. When you are talking to other people or, or other folks that are listening or watching this, and they're going, okay. I feel like I'm either on the verge of that or I'm in the middle of that as well. Right. What are what are some of the things that that means to you on a daily basis? What are some of those things that you're that you're still working through and learning? That's a that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of pieces to that. So, um, from from a decision standpoint, it, yeah. we decided. I, I decided I had to be very intentional. I went through a lot of staffing shifts okay. and lost almost my entire staff last year. Oh, it was wow. it was very painful. Yeah. And so um, we got very intentional about who I put into place next. And I made sure it was people who shared the same vision as I did. Mm. And I put the vision out there at the beginning. This is the purpose of this business. Yeah. We want to provide great service and do great work. And then there are these other things that I want that I personally want to do, and I can't be the CEO, which is chief everything officer, (laughs) and be the CEO, which is the chief executive officer. I can't do both. Sure. So we started making the transition of putting the people into place who could take over the roles that I was doing that were duplicatable. Yeah. Um, There there can only be one shepherd in the shepherd law, and that has to be me. And if I'm going to leave the business, I can't be doing everything else. So I intentionally sought out people who either had the skill set or had the mindset or had the personality or all three, preferably, that I could duplicate the things that I could offload. Started offloading a lot of the work that I was doing and focusing on uh, things that we wanted to grow into. And so now we're at the start of 2020 and getting ready to put into practice some of those things that we have been preparing for, which is very cool. Yeah. But um, you know, you can't do everything and then do more. You you, you have to. Something's got to give. Sure. So. Hey, thanks for listening to the Coffee Break podcast. If this information has been helpful to you, or you just really kind of like our theme song, can you help us out by rating us on whatever app you're using? And if you get really fancy, how about sharing a screenshot on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn? Okay, enough of all this. Let's get back to the conversation. So during that hiring process, I guess that you said you kind of had a big changeover in your mm-hmm. staff. What what kind of sparked that understanding of making sure that you that you pitch that vision that that kind of what this business is about mm-hmm. more so than just hey can you do this skill right what what was the shift in that how did you get that awareness uh, so uh, um, I was very blessed to have some people around me when I first opened yeah. the practice who who shared that vision with me and we we put our vision down on paper from from the get go mm. and tried to come back to it and and again I, I think intentional is a good word for it. We tried to be very intentional about what are we trying to accomplish here. Yeah. Um, it, it, at the end of the day, it's a business. It's a for-profit business. We want to make that work, and we want to do great work and provide great service. But we had to be very intentional about the rest of it. Otherwise, it was never going to happen. So the vision went down on paper, and we came back to it again and again. We hung it on the wall, and then we. I realized when we had the staffing shift that we weren't staying true to that mm-hmm. with the people that we hired. Yeah. So um, my job posting actually said, I want people who are, have a servant's heart. I want people with me who understand that business is business, yeah. but it can also serve a greater good. And I specifically sought out those type of people, and I, and I did not 
I purposely did not interview even people yeah. who just didn't embody that mindset. Yeah, no, I think that's very. I think it's very wise. It, it's something that it ta- a lot of for a lot of us it takes a long time to learn, right? Right. But, uh, we in our most recent uh, kind of focus for hiring, that's kind of the shift that we yeah. said is, hey, we're problem solvers. Right. That's ultimately right. anybody in this organization is a problem solver. Exactly. Take the locks and the and the security systems out of it. It's it's that's what we're about. Right. How can we get more problem solvers here? Not you know yeah. that. Thinking that way and then finding people that buy into the overall vision of what you're what you're about is massive can create a massive shift because then you have everybody working in the same direction rather than just coming in and performing their duty and 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 checking out. Yeah. Yep. So exactly. So once you started hiring that, you you saw a major shift, I would imagine, in just the the level of uh, of outcome that you had for your customers. I yes. And I will say the shift was not automatic it wasn't overnight we we had a lot of um incoherity incohesiveness yeah uh, incoherity is not a word a lack of cohesiveness so sure. we had a lot of team building a lot of uh, trust building a lot of uh, training that had to be done to get okay. us all on the same page um, we revamped our process we changed our software uh, we did a lot of things with the purpose, the sole purpose of being very intentional about what we were, what we were doing. And the feedback I've been getting lately is that, hey, we, we've got the pieces right. Yeah. Um, and, and now that the pieces are right, I feel like it's scalable. Do you, do you think that the process building was something that was just very, like, natural to you? Is something that you just kind of, uh, in, like, just understood that that's what needed to happen? Or was this based off of some other, you know, maybe books that you were reading or feedback or, or input that you'd gotten from other people? Because that's I think that's one of, as I've talked with a lot of, of other business owners, it feels like, at a point, you understand you have a bunch of processes, but it mm-hmm. almost it takes a little while to get to the point of realizing, oh, I need to document these processes or make sure that we're actually refining them. Um, I think that's a that's a great question. Um, I am very coachable, very teachable. I um, my name is on the wall, but I'm not the most important person in the room ever. Sure. Um, I'm the one that's there to make sure everybody gets the job done and gets paid, um, so that they can take care of their families. So I have accepted in, input from everybody who will give it to me. Any book. I can read anybody who's been there or done that or anybody on my staff who says, hey, I have an idea. Yeah. Um, and we'll we'll talk about it. We'll, you know, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. We'll tweak it if it doesn't work. Um, and we've just been over the last year and a half constantly um, adjusting. Yeah. Um, and it's it, it, it's part of a collaborative process. And that's part of, you know, making sure you're surrounded by the right people, I sure. think. And as long as you're surrounded by the right people and you're willing to be coachable and teachable, all of you, including the people that you're working with, yeah. um, you can learn from each other. You can make adjustments as you go. And eventually you end up with a really good process. And I feel like we do have a really good process, but we're still tweaking it. Yeah. So. W- with that, just because uh, I like to try to think in, in terms of like some practical, tangible, takeaways that people can utilize are you doing this through like uh, regularly scheduled staff meetings is this like kind of one-offs is this or is it what does that process look like for you guys for that collaborative like working together um so i'm embarrassed to admit this but we don't have regularly scheduled meetings okay we are going to start implementing those because i feel like it's important especially as there are more humans in the mix yeah. for us all to come together and have those conversations but um, as it's been going for the last year and a half, we've just sort of, um, you know, hey, there's a problem. Let's let's talk it out and fix it, um, sort of on the fly. And um, a lot of the a lot of the fixes have come directly from me, and I'm trying to transition that over to the team, where we all come together and and say, hey, kind of teach how the decisions are made. Correct, and give them empower them to make the to make the decisions without me there, or to make the decisions as a group. You know, we're all doing this day to day. What can we do to make it better? And and you know, thankfully, I have some really great people that sure. that can do that, and and just just giving them the power to do that. So you you've gone through this hiring process. You're you're figuring out who who are the actual people. You know, to, to kind of quote the the traction philosophy with Gina Wickman, it's the right people in the right seats on the bus, right? right? And you're you're learning that process, and you're you're implementing that. Now you're seeing some success from it. Mm-hmm. Now you're in this mode of transitioning into. Um, not only the 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 practitioner, but the leader, mm-hmm. um, and and kind of leading the course and setting the vision for the future. Uh, what are some of the things that you've learned through that process? And I mean, because you're actively going through it, what is right. what are some yeah. of the things that even you're still questioning? Going, ah, is this even does this even make sense? Um, I, 
being in the thick of it means that you're uncomfortable a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm uncomfortable a lot. And I'm also a little bit uh, type A. Um, I, I like to have control over things. So I've had to really focus hard on stepping back sure. and turning over that control and that power to other people. And I constantly have to remind myself, hey, these guys know what they're doing. Th- these ladies are very smart. Mm-hmm. You chose them because they have good hearts. Um, give them the power and then let go of it. Don't take, don't keep taking it back. Yeah, that That's a big one is don't keep taking it back because it's confusing to your staff if you give them power and then take it back. Yeah. Um, again, mentorship. I, I have um, really great people around me, and I'm very coachable. So if they see something that I'm doing, they have f- free reign to say, hey, Candace, knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, just being willing to change. Uh, a lot of people, especially business owners, that once you find something that's working okay, um, we'll just keep doing it. Don't, but I don't I, need to break what's uh, or fix, fix what's it. Ain't broken, yeah. Yeah. But good is the enemy of great. Yeah. And um, so if you're if you're afraid to make the change, then then you're you're going to stagnate for sure. Or those little problems were going to, are going to become big problems. Yeah. So fix it. One of the things that you mentioned earlier that I, I find very intriguing is that you you you're working on a practice and building a practice and you're and you're trying to grow that practice not necessarily just for sake of the growth but because it will feed other things that you're trying to accomplish right that is it's a it's trying to process that through in your head and it's not very abnormal some of those things as a business owner maybe it feeds other personal interests that are, are not that not as in the uh, giving aspect but what you're talking about is to be able to help with a certain type of legal advice right. or, or process uh, yep. that would not be profitable I guess is, is that what right. you're kind of referring to yes and we've been working towards um, a profitability level on the firm side that's going to feed into a nonprofit organization on the non firm side it's all going to it's all going to be part and parcel of one or the other uh, one and the other, but at, at the same time, there are certain certain things that I'm doing this year that are not going to make any money. Yeah. And in order to pay the bills and keep the lights on and make sure my staff is, is cared for, there has to be funds from somewhere. So the practice is being grown to the point where it can feed uh, another part of the practice that we're going to add this year that's not necessarily profitable, and that's adoption. Um, I'm part of an organization that um, hosts orphan children from Eastern Europe. And through that organization, I met my youngest son, who is adopted. Mm -hmm. And that has been a passion of mine forever. No intention of ever actually adopting, but um, God had other other plans for me. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. So I adopted uh, my husband and I about a, a year and two months ago. And the goal now is to add an adoption and immigration portion to our practice, yep. which is not necessarily as lucrative as the other parts, but it's but it's important work. Yeah. And then we also want to add a nonprofit or- organization that serves the families who love the orphans, um, the families who are making them part of their families, orphan no longer, but a son and daughter. Yeah. And that was one of the things that you had mentioned is that once that process happens, once the adoption uh, of, of the uh, those orphans mm-hmm. happened, then there's not a whole lot of information out right. there. There's not a whole lot of a support so, system that says, hey, these are some things that you're going to encounter. These are some things yep. that you need to be mindful of exactly. in that process. So it's more like, I guess, of a, a coaching or a, what would you see I, that as? I, I see it more as a support um, offering support where I had a phenomenal support group um, in the sense of the, the organization that we hosted through is called Open Hearts and Homes for Children. And the the families that we met through that mm-hmm. uh, organization provided us just immense amount of support yeah. um, as far as, you know, what books to read, what resources to seek out. Um, hey, you can call me if you're having a terrible day and say yeah. this is what's happening. But most people don't have that support. Or if they don't have the strong friend group that I got through that organization, they need they might need a little nudge. Yeah. So um, we're, we're hoping to offer, you know, sort of a central repository for um, bringing up those resources and those um, that information and also providing a space where newly adopted parents can become supports for one another i I, we can't support all of them but they can support each other and and unless you know adult friendships are hard (laughs) so having a place where a safe place where you have commonality with other folks and and can 
can make those relationships and those connections. Kind of like building a mentoring program for those type yeah. of folks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and also um, just a place to come together maybe once a month and just talk through, hey, this is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Gotcha. Just a reminder, you're listening to the Coffee Break Podcast. Also, we wanted to let you know that our team puts together a weekly blog post. You can find it at locdoc.net slash blog. It's guaranteed to raise your IQ by 12 points or your money back. So it's pretty much a win-win. All right, back to the conversation. As as you said, you know, they're all building on each other so that they can support each other at the end of the day. You you also mentioned, you said said something very... um, that caught my attention earlier when we were chatting uh, before we started recording is that in order for for you to do some of the things, I'm trying to remember exactly how you phrased it, in order for you to do some of the things that you wanted to accomplish this year, you had to change the way that your business operated. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times, I think it's it's interesting that you're, that you're having foresight in that aspect because a lot of times um, as, as business leaders, we figure out after the fact Oh, I have to change some things so that I can do what I'm doing now, yeah. right? And uh, so, kind of like talk us through what that means, because yeah. I, I think it's a very, um, I, it, it's something that's very fundamental when you're talking about business and you're talking about scaling a business, mm-hmm. which is ultimately what you're doing in this is in this is developing refined processes so that they can be transferred to other people. Right. But you're doing it intentionally ahead of the game so that it will open up doors for you to do other things. Right. Well, it is fundamental, but it's not intuitive. Yeah. Um, so it, it, part, the, the first part is figuring out what it is that you want. If you don't know what you want or where you want to go, then you're going to be stuck in the day-to-day bogged down in the in the operations and the running of the business and you 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 can't do anything more than what you're doing because there's no bandwidth there's no time there's no energy there's no anything mm-hmm. and, and and that's okay but if there are other things that you want to do first you got to figure out what that is and then second of all how do I get there yeah. and I spent a lot of time I mean decades <laughs> praying and thinking about what it is that I wanted to do. Yeah. So when I opened the doors at Shepherd Law, it was um, sort of a natural second step to say, okay, what do I want to do next? Gotcha. And what I wanted to do next involved me getting the first step solid, the foundation really, really solid, and then start figuring out how to hand that over to other people. If I didn't, then I couldn't do step two, three, and four. Yeah. And so it's very intentional, and it's, it's very much about figuring out what it is that you want to do. If, if you don't have, if you don't know where you're going, you can't get there. Yeah, I know. So it's it's a lot of strategy building because you've got to really. I think again, what you just said. Until you know where you're wanting to go, you're going to be so bogged down into right. what you're doing that you're not even going to have any time to think. Exactly. Once that once that process starts, you're you better be ready. Right. To hold on for the ride. Yeah. So uh, essentially, you're saying before you get to that point, or even if you're in the middle of that right now, it's mm-hmm. not too late to stop exactly. and say, okay, yeah. hold on a second. We've got this thing going. Yeah. What is it actually that we're trying to go towards? Exactly. And then kind of re- redefine it at that point. Well, and once you figure out what it is you want to do, you might determine that, hey, the day-to-day operations is what I want to do. Yeah. This practice of law, of real estate law, this is what I want to do. And yeah. that's okay too. Then you build your, build your business around that. But I just knew that there was other things that I wanted to do. And in order to do that, I had to figure out how to step back. Yeah. Well, well, and, and, and in, in that same sense, uh, I don't know specifically in, in your industry, but a lot of times you can go, okay, well, this is something that I really want to continue doing. Right. So I'm going to bring in, uh, you know, other folks that can actually grow the business or run right. the business because exactly. I just want to, I just want to deal with people and, uh, and, and do my, my lawyer thing. That's, that's what I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. if, but if it needs to scale, then I've got to bring something, somebody in to, mm-hmm. to kind of help with that process. Exactly. Yep. But all, it all comes back to, I think what the core fundamental that you're talking about is understanding what that is right. and one, what what you want that to look like, exactly. and then what are the pieces that are going to get us there. Very I think, much so. I think that's very insightful because, and again, what you said, it's not intuitive. It's not right. naturally intuitive to no. try to think through those processes before. Question for you on that, and, and I, I'm just trying to dig into this process sure. building thing. What prompted you to think that way? Like, because it's not intuitive... What, or is the, were there past experiences that you had been through that kind of that kind of brought you to that? Was that mm-hmm. reading? Was that mentoring? Like, kind of what brought you to that understanding? All of the above. Are you just a yes. super genius? I'm not a super genius. <laughs> there is nothing special about Candace Shepard. No, no, I'm just very, very coachable, yeah. 100%. Um, and 
it, I mean, it it did start at a young age. And okay. I think if you're in high school or middle school, it's not too early to start thinking about those things. If you're 45, it's not too late to start thinking about those things. Um, but I think I think the important thing is just to say, this is what I want my life to look like. You know, mm-hmm. I have I have two girls who are in high school, and I keep they're they're frustrated because they don't know where they want to go to college and they don't know what they want to major in and all of that's fine but I think you start from the from the end and work your way backwards what do you want your life to look like yeah if you want to be a stay-at-home mom you can't get a degree from Harvard with a six-figure college debt and be a stay-at-home mom or a teacher or you know something that you're very passionate about if you want the big firm job which a lot of my friends in law school did, um, then, you know, by all means, do whatever you got to do to get that. But but you have to be very intentional about thinking what you about what you want. And that does involve talking to a lot of people. Yeah. It involves in, um, exposing yourself to a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different options, researching them, talking to people who are doing them. Um, reading books, certainly, 100%. But I'm, I'm all about talking to people. I, I think the person who's doing the job that you think you might want is probably going to give you more information than a book could any day. It is interesting because, you know, in that same mindset, a lot of times it, there's a, it's intimidation factor of sure. actually going and talking to the person. Oh, 100%. That, you know, but yeah, most absolutely. of the time you find out people are very open to having that conversation and sharing that information. They usually are. And if they're not, find somebody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't waste your time on that right. person. Right. Yeah, they're not going to give you any good good information anyway. <laughs> yeah. Very fair. Yeah. Very interesting. So, you're in the process now. You're right. you're scaling a business, you're growing and you're about to open up an, another location. Second location. Yeah. So, because of of the foresight that you've had with with all of this, understanding how are these processes going to be transferred between mm-hmm. two separate group, uh, two separate teams? Yeah, well, um, it's not going to be two separate teams. Okay. Um, it's going to be one team in two separate locations. All right. Um, the hub of all the operations is going to be in one location, and everybody is going to either take a turn at the satellite location, or we're going to have people going back and forth, or uh, we, we haven't we haven't sorted out how that's going sure. to look yet. But it, but it's still one team, um, and if we have seventeen locations, it's going to be one team in seventeen locations. I just don't um, as far as scalability, as far as what I do, yeah. it doesn't work well to do it any other way. Um, I think there are other business models where it would work well, but I, for us, it's got to be one team doing everybody, everything sure. in different locations. So th- from that standpoint, it, it's not much of a change, but the difference is going to be what humans do we need to add yeah. and what personalities and what skill sets do we need to add to make this functional and make sure the, co- the clients don't see a dip in service. Sure. So. What do you see as you're as you're going through that process? Uh, maybe it's something that you're still dealing with right now. So you feel free to uh, to say, "Hey, this is something that we're still learning." Is the uh, the communication? Mm-hmm. So as you build a, a growing team, mm-hmm. how you're continuing that that communication line? How you're how you're making sure that everybody is is getting the the relevant information mm-hmm. regularly? What is what does that look like for you? We're we're still working on that. Yeah. But one thing that we have done is I've added uh, somebody as I've stepped back there has to be somebody who's in charge every day okay and I've added a practice manager who's got years and years and years of 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 managerial experience she's a she's a wonderful person and she's there every day got it uh, whereas it where I'm not there every day she's the constant now where I used to be um, and I think that's important be, because there has to be somebody at the helm yeah um, so that's one piece of it the other piece is our software I, I think um, I think software can do a lot if yeah. you find the right the right set of, of tools. Uh, you can you can make it work, and our our the tools that we have put in place have made it a lot simpler to to communicate issues and um, who's done what, where are we in the process, what are the issues, what are the challenges, what are the, what, what's going well in each particular file. Um, and then you know the third is that it's just going to keep evolving yeah. as we figure things out. Just con- constantly reassessing yeah. and ap- and applying new changes because right. I I mean it's I think you, you see that at every level we run through that in our organization just trying to understand where things are in that process. Right. You know you've, you've you've got software to aid in it, but right. you still have to then you have to learn how to train everybody on right. how to use the software. That's and then you have to continue. get people to actually use it, <laughs> put the notes in it. It's a, <laughs> Continual evolution of, uh, of of each one of those components, so that it's a it's a working a working process. 
And I think one of the places we've gotten a little bit complacent is the the, the meetings, the face-to-face discussions. Yeah. So we, um, after listening to one of your previous podcasts, we are going to add back in the weekly meetings, even if it means that, hey, you got to take a 20-minute break from your workload yeah. to have this face-to-face conversation with the entire team. Yeah. So they're uh, game changers. Yeah, I, I mean it's you can it's not just ours, but I mean you talk to anybody uh, that is that is doing that on a regular basis, then there's massive value. I know there's mm-hmm. there's one company, um, Dave Ramsey Ramsey Solutions. Mm-hmm. They have I think last I heard was 800 plus employees wow. that they shut down operations on Monday morning for a full hour to have. Nice. A team meeting, which is you think about that uh, that payroll. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but they they find value in it, and right. it's important, and so they place yeah. they place the value on it. So it's very it's very interesting what each business values as mm-hmm. as what's what is priority and how you adapt to that uh, in in a day to day basis. So, all right, cool. Uh, so you're you're in a scaling business. You're growing. You're op- you're getting ready to open up a second location, and you're also stepping outside of the day to day operations, mm-hmm. and you've got other people coming in place. What's next? What is what is kind of that next evolution that you're yeah. that you're working towards? So uh, we we have um, an, a really amazing associate attorney who's taking over one part of the practice, the estate stuff. Okay, um, I'm in the process of hiring somebody to take over the real estate stuff. Um, my next move is to um, well, what I'm doing is trying to to get the the second location up and running, um, get the nonprofit up and running. The addition of a third practice area, the adoption and immigration, that's sort of fluid. We'll see how that goes. Sure. But I'm also in the process of being becoming Canfield certified. I'm going to start doing keynote speeches and and uh, workshops and things like that to. Uh, my my passion is helping women understand their place in the world and that that they can have a seat in the table at home and at work and and make them both very very fruitful and yeah so that that's 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 what's next for me sure but the business is just going to keep growing and so essentially you're building out a team i mean you're actively building a team you're, yes you're putting people in charge of different departments or or, or structures it's that's an exciting Practice thing to be to be like heavily involved in right, right. now like this is yep. this is live this is real this is yeah this is going on right now <laughs> Well, I we obviously wish you the best of luck in all of those. Um, it seems like you I, the the cool thing about having a conversation with you is you seem very uh, very intentional about the future and very intentional about the, the steps that you're trying to take. So That's the goal. Um, it's uh, it's very inspiring uh, and and kind of motivating to say, okay, you now what are what are how are you plotting this out and actually what are the steps to get there versus sure. just kind of a, a hope and a, a, a right. hope and a, a prayer. Right. 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 Well, thank you very much. If anybody wants to get a hold of you and, and use your practice, what's the best way to do that? So we have a main phone number, 704-769-3100. Okay. Um, we have a, a, an email that you can contact anytime. It's info at shepherdlawplc.com. It's S-H-E-P-A-R-D. And our website is awful right now, but it's, it's in progress. It's being <laughs> fixed as we speak. So that we'll have that as well. Candace, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's been very insightful, very informative. For those of you who are watching or listening for the first time, we definitely invite you to go to our website, lockdoc.net slash podcast. There you'll find all the episodes from season one and season two. There's over 70 episodes there from all various topics. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe. Every podcast platform that we're on, all the links are right there for you. You can click right to it and subscribe. That way you'll get the latest episode as it comes available every Tuesday um, right here on whatever platform that you're watching on. Also, we have this in-video version as well on Facebook and YouTube. All you have to do is search for LOC, DOC, and you'll find us there. You can subscribe there as well. Make sure you click the like and follow and all of the things that you need to do so you can make sure you get the updated information every single week. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Coffee Break Podcast. Podcast.